This God, if only we could understand Him, would be so much grateful and thankful that by His grace He has saved us and given us uh, everlasting life free of charge. Uh, we continue to um, look at the covenant, mm, the covenant, um, specifically zeroing on the new covenant between the Father the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, 
I'm continuing to look at that, um, the covenant. My heart's desire, I believe as the Holy Spirit put this message in my spirit, my heart's desire began to be how much you and I need to really understand this covenant with the better promises so that we may work it in our lives and be able to enjoy the abundant life for which Jesus paid a great price, a very dear price, because of the death that he died, a horrible death, horrible death in the merciless hands of the very creatures he had created. And yet he humbled himself to come and die the death of man on a cross so that you and I may find life in him and have eternal life and have access to his blood to the Father. And so this is how that covenant we're talking about was made between the Father and the Son. The Son paid the most expensive. It's a priceless price. I mean a priceless. You can't put value on the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the most important blood ever shed on earth. The most valuable. It's of his own class, the blood of Jesus. And that's why that blood was sprinkled by Jesus on the mercy seat in heaven. Jesus, the high priest, took the blood, his own blood, that day when he was crucified. Uh, those are the things we receive, we understand by faith. He took his blood, took it to heaven, sprinkled it on the mercy seat, and so that blood is speaking on the mercy seat. And one of the things, or the greater things he's speaking about is, you have come under uh, the new covenant between the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. Now let's read Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Hebrews 8, verse 6. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. I wish you could say that with me. A better covenant, hmm? which was established upon better promises. A better covenant established upon better promises. Now, that's a wonderful covenant. And you are the beneficiary of all that which Jesus bought on the cross for us. Uh, salvation, the healing of our bodies, the deliverance of our souls, the peace of to our minds, and all that we benefited from. So much above all the eternal life because of that covenant. Now, I want us to look today as a, a, at one of uh, good keys to understand when you're working that covenant. And that is, you need to understand how faith works <laughs> and operate it accordingly. How faith works and operate it accordingly, if you've understood it. Now, I believe that many of us, including myself, many of us would be are living lives far much better and more fulfilling and victorious if we understood a better covenant on better promises. And by better promises, let me read for you a wonderful scripture on those promises. What kind of promises are these better promises? <laughs> I want to look at 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, we're looking at uh, uh, special verse 3 and 4. Hmm? Make a note of those scriptures. And if you can commit them to memory, it will be a blessing in your own life. Verse, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The more you know of God, the more you know of Jesus, the better it will be in your life. Because the more you know of God, because Isaiah 43 verse 10, one of the scriptures I love, declares that God has called you so that you may know him and that you may believe him and that you may understand him. 
That's a great calling you have. So, the more you know him, the more you understand him and uh, work these promises which he has given us. Let me continue reading for you these promises. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto, the, unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world today through us. So you can see, God wants you to enjoy a better life because of the better promises he has given to you on a better covenant. Praise God. I like to, let me tell you a story that will probably help fix this in your mind. I wish it would. I pray it does. Hmm? I, there's a lady who, in their country, she used to go for a great meeting that was called a convention. It gathered so many people. And in those days, there was a great man of God who came to minister to them and preach and teach them. And then what miracles. Many would, be, would get healed. And so she was there with a goiter. She had a problem. She had a goiter. And that day, they called people who were not feeling well for prayer. And she went in front. And they prayed for them. And from that day, she believed she's healed of the goiter even though it didn't instantly disappear. The following year, she was in that convention again, and she had a testimony to tell those people. She told them that the previous year, she got healed of a goiter. But they were looking at her and seeing the goiter is still there. See? And that is the majority of us as believers. Hmm? Sometimes we don't even realize that... Uh, we also subscribe to seeing is believing. Hmm? So she's there giving a testimony that she's already healed. Which testimony agrees with the word of God? First Peter 2, 24. And then the people are looking at her and wondering, what's wrong with this sister? The following year, that's now the second year. The following year, she had the same testimony. Brethren, I want to thank God for healing me of a goiter. But the goiter is still there. And I think some of the brethren began wondering, maybe her mind is not working well. The third year, she was in the same convention, and she stood up, and as soon as she said, Brethren, I thank God for healing me, instantly, the goiter disappeared. Now that's called working mm, the promises of a better promise of a, a better covenant. A better promise is you are already healed. A better promise is it is finished. A better promise is God has already done it all for you. A better promise is you can now enjoy the life of God. A better promise built on the finished work of God. And that sister got a miraculous healing. Now, few brethren would hold that long. But think of Abraham, the father of faith. How long he took? Hmm? Can you imagine 20 years and you are giving, giving a testimony? God gave us a promise 20 years ago that we will have a son. And I believe God, brethren, with all my heart, the son is coming. And the brethren who have been there for a long time say, the old man, how old man I think his mind is grown up. He's been telling us the same thing for 20 years. But one day, 25 years later, Abraham and a child, and they named him Isaac. Isaac means laughter. They had so much laughter. I believe in God breakthrough in your life, and you see the miracle. You have a lot to laugh. You have a lot to laugh. And I'm praying that you'd understand, hmm? understand that the faith that God has given you is the key that you need for working the promises of God. But there is so much in that faith because that faith must please God. Hmm? In Hebrews 11, 5 to 6, and I'll please God. And you cannot please God if you do not have the faith. So to please God, you need to have faith. 
in the name of Jesus. You need to believe God is able. You need to believe God is good. You need to believe God can. You need to believe all things are possible with God. But even Jesus believed that all things are possible with his Father. Mark 4, verse 36. And Jesus prayed to the Father. He said, I know all things are possible to you, all of you. I pray you'll come to that place where you'll begin to see God. All things are possible with this God. I want us to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you for your people. Thank you for the, those who are in need of healing. Blessed the Holy Spirit. Thank you for them today. I see somebody with a very painful tooth, or, or toothache, very, very painful. I remember one day I had a painful toothache and the preacher laid his hands on me and rebuked that toothache and from that time. Hmm? So I want to pray for you by faith now. We have better covenant, better promises, and I can speak to that pain even from a distance and to be healed. So I rebuke you toothache. I curse you in Jesus' name. I curse you pain. I curse you tooth pain in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command healing to that brother or that sister in the name of Jesus. Be healed by the power in the blood of Jesus. Now I want to speak to those who may not yet be born again. I want to encourage you to give your heart to Jesus. The Bible says that if you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died, was buried and raised again from the dead, if you believe that, you will be saved. But you have to tell God. And this is how you tell God. You say, say with me, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I believe him. You sent him to die for me. I believe in him today. And I opened my heart and I said to him, Welcome into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in now. Come in to stay and give me power to live for you. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Christ Coworkers with the Lord who welcomes you to encounter God in the Word, praise and worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. online. We are on Facebook and YouTube at Crisco Bugalori. The Victorious Christian Life is here in the world. So join us online with Pastor John Otala. Subscribe to and watch Crisco Bugalori on YouTube. God richly bless you.